actually curious to see what we can do with prime numbers in like let's go great let's go great six and see what there is for prime numbers those things are introduced in grade five so grade six you probably just step it up a little bit prime or composite numbers let's look at the size of these things remembering that a prime number at that uh, level all you're requiring probably is the concept right so prime number we need the divisibility concept divisible by one and the number itself so we do need a sound divisibility concept that's established but we're not introducing these with, with very big numbers so this prime number in many people neglect to they have this requirement but there's really two requirements right the number has to be greater than one one itself is not classified as a prime number after one then i start checking so many maybe don't highlight that so one is not a prime number four is divisible by two five is divisible by a couple five and three and 17 is the only one that has both of these requirements prime number so uh, one is sort of a special case I suppose so that all the other properties and how we're using prime numbers as building blocks work we don't want them to be trivial with one because any number times one is just the same number so things don't we don't really make progress if we consider one as a prime number uh, it's good to to work through these and sort of start to memorize and know the smaller prime numbers not 10 divisible by 2 13 not, uh, 5 and obviously not 6 is divisible by 2 and 3 so I would say if we can get at least get to the 30s uh, fairly quickly then it just speeds things up uh, a little bit you want your small numbers to be pretty solid but if we for example uh, are working at a grade five six level and we have to test if 19 ooh, writing is terrible here if 19 is prime because initially the students won't know right they it takes time to to memorize we can check how much divisibility do we need to really check divisibility by two well that'll be pretty easy for them because it's not an even number so that's not divisible by two we do have to check three but as we've seen before we already have the divisibility test for three where we add up the digits and that's super easy here one plus nine is ten not divisible by three we don't even have to check five right because 5 squared is 25 over my number that's my my check 5 squared is greater than the number I'm checking so I don't even have to check anything past that impossible it's not going to reveal anything so it's very small and very easy at that level to verify these numbers and eventually memorize them so 17 I can do in exactly the same way 19 15, of course, is multiple of 3, 5, they should know, and 13, I can do in a very similar way. And after a while, I just I will speed up. I, I've seen 19 before. Oh, 19 is a prime number. I've seen 9 before, not 8, not 4, not. And it just it snowballs very quickly, very quickly. But I would say if we can get to the 30s and have that memorized, that's pretty that's pretty good. That gives you a nice base to, to work from. Let's look at factors. 
identifying factors. We've established by this time the divisibility concept, hopefully grade five. So a factor is just another way of phrasing the divisibility. A number, so five for example here, like we've said. Five is a factor of my number in question, 15. That's just another way of saying that 5 times some integer can give me 50 integer. And the numbers don't have to be big to establish this concept. In grade 6, we're establishing this concept. So 5 times something is 15, not 12, not 9, not 2, so they are not factors. So we want to establish a nice, solid concept so that when the numbers get bigger and messier, the concept does not change at all. Which numbers are factors of 2? Well, I'm looking for this guy times an integer to be 2. That's not going to happen. 1 times 2 is 2, not 7 and not 6. So the factor concept uh, oh, this is a different phrasing. Besides 4 and 1, what is one factor of 4? So we can ask as we go through the grades higher and higher, we can have the exact same phrasing. And just these numbers get systematically more bigger and bigger and more and more complicated. The concept is really not going to change at all. So we can actually look at... Let's look at 4 and its factor tree. Let's do a thorough uh, investigation or discussion here. So 4 is 2 times 2. So 1 is always a factor of everything. Always a factor. So after, the, after 1, what can I really do to create factors of my original number? Well, I can just take selections of the building blocks. Now, this is so small, we don't have a lot of room to move, but we can expand that to something bigger in a second. So think of these twos as different, separate building blocks. Combining them together gives me my four. So I can take this building block and I have a factor that fits into that because this guy times something else gives me my number. But I could also take this one, oopsie, the other one, because that times some integer will give me the number. But that's the same factor in this case. So 2, whether I select it from the first one or the second one, it's kind of the same. But depending on the building blocks and the factors, they could be different selections, right? So before I'm going to put in a 2, I'll put in a 2 there. Let's make it more complicated. Because I don't know what the next question is going to be. Let's take uh, factors of, mm, let's go 12. I can look at the factor tree of 12. Maybe I split it up 4 and 3. 3 is done. Then 4 can be split up 2 and 2. So let's write over here. 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. Now, to make factors of 12, let's write it over here. 1 is always going to be in that list. And then I'm just taking selections of the building blocks. I can just take one type of building block, 2, or I can select 3. And then I can also take 
pairs of building blocks. I can take these two to make a four. And four, oopsie, that should not have a box. Re There's no redo button. Oh no. Four times something in the box will give me my 12, and therefore four is a factor of 12. But I can also take another pair of building blocks and create a different factor, six. Now, I could also, oopsie, 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 I erased it. I took the first two, I took the last two. I can also take the outside two, but that just creates six again. So that's not a new factor. And then lastly, I can take all three and that times an integer one will give me my number and therefore that 12 is also a factor of 12. And so I can look at selections of the building blocks to create a list of all the factors of a given number. Welcome to MathCats, where we aim to better understand mathematics. Join us weekly for discussions on elementary, high school, through to university math. You can request the next topic by leaving a comment on our YouTube channel or by emailing us at mathcats314 at gmail.com. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thank you. Now, we still don't want that to be too big, but I think a 12 is quite reasonable. We'll see what they give me here. Oh, here I just have to choose which numbers are factors of 13. That's handy. If I understand what a prime number is, and recognize that 13 is a prime number, by definition, the only numbers divisible, or that 13 is divisible by, is one and itself. So any prime number will only have two positive integer fract uh, factors. One, which is not listed here, and the number itself. So it's certainly handy, like I said, to at least memorize the first few prime numbers. Definitely handy. Okay, so here's a six. It's not as big as I would have liked, but hey, we're just starting this concept. I can use a factor tree or not, but six is pretty straightforward. So if I want to list first all the factors of six, one is always going to be a factor whose one divides into anything with no remainder, special number. Then I can take selections of building blocks. Let's take singles first, two, and I can take the other type of building block, three. And then I can take pairs of building blocks, <coughs> excuse me, Pairs of building blocks, well, there are only two, so that creates six, which is always where my factor list will end with the number itself. So one, two, three, and six are all factors of six. Pick your favorite one, maybe a two, and there you go. Look for something a little bigger. Let's make this perhaps a little more than the question is asking. And let's say we want to find all the factors of 18. Not just check these guys. Well, I need the prime factorization. I need the building blocks of 18. Well, 18 can be split into 2 and 9. 2 is a prime number, so that ends that side. And 9 can be split up as 3 times 3. So 18, let's write it over here. 18 is 2 times 3 times 3. We can do exponents as well. It doesn't, doesn't matter at all. So now I want to make my factor list based on selections of these building blocks because my factor has to fit into 18 which means it has to be made up out of the same 
building blocks, perhaps less, but it can't be using any building block that 18 doesn't already have. So I'm going to start with a 1, which is the same kind of as selecting nothing. You can think of the 1 as I select nothing. There's always a little 1 hidden there if I want to, right? I select none of them. That's a 1. But you don't have to think of it like that right now. Then I want to select singles. Well, I can select the two building block and the three building block. Those are the same type of building block. Then I can select pairs, two and three. The first two will give me a six. Those two. Those two will give me a nine. And the last two gives me a six, six again, so it's the same factor. And then all three will give me my 18, and those are all the factors of 18. Now, I know that's not what the question asked, but <clears throat> it's, a, it's a good variation of the of a factor question to find them all. By just understanding how the building blocks work, I can just take selections, and in doing that, find all the factors. So, this, num this question just wants me to check, is 4 a factor of 18? So I can now see that as, well, 4 cannot be a factor of 18, because I cannot create 4 from a selection of the building blocks of 18, because the building blocks of 18 only has one, that set only has one, two available. I can't make a 4 with any combination of these. So that's another way of looking at it. 6, yes, we've established because I can make a selection of these building blocks and create 6. 5, no, no, these building blocks will not combine in any way to create a 5. 54, that's, that's not going to happen. I, I can't make a 54 out of these building blocks. Or you can also remember that the, my factor list is not going to go lower than 1. It's always going to start at 1. And it's always going to stop at the number itself. So that means <clears throat> excuse me, a larger number cannot be a factor. A larger number cannot be a factor of that number. 54 is bigger than 18, so I don't even care about selections. It's impossible. We'll submit that one. And you see that our, our size of our numbers are not getting ridiculous anytime soon. We have a lot of time of establishing that core concept of divisibility and factors and so on. You can try this one. The 8's not very big, but you can let me know if you want to.